Hi guys, my name is Neha Gupta and I am your mentor for current affairs at anujinder.in. So today we are going to discuss a total number of 10 news items so you can yourself understand how important this lecture is going to be for your examination. So do listen to this video till the end. And now I know that you must be thinking that 10 news items would extend this video to 40 to 45 minutes and this will become boring eventually. So let me clear this doubt for you guys. No, this is not going to become boring because we will try to cover all the news items in a very crisp manner and in order to uh, and from the perspective of exam. So we are not going to delve into extra or insignificant uh, information. We will only cover the most important information in the news. So let's quickly begin our video for the day. But before that, I would like you guys to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that you get the instant uh, updates about the channel. Then also do not forget to subscribe to our Telegram channel and enjoy the free quizzes that we provide there. So we have come to the slide where we will be discussing about today's topics. So first topic is about the International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste Reduction. Then we will be discussing about parliamentary committees. Then about the new president of Film and Television Institute of India Society. Then the rich list presented by Harun IIFL. Then an MOU for SMEs. What are SMEs? I, ho I hope that you guys know that what are SMEs. SMEs are small and medium enterprises. So an MOU has been signed for empowerment of M uh, SMEs and we will be discussing all the details of the MOU in the later half of this video. But do not leave the video in the middle by thinking that this is going to be boring. No, it is not going to be boring. Trust me, we will be, cover uh, we will be covering all the news in a very crisp manner. Then we have India's first warehouse commodity finance app. India's Green Strategic Partnership with another country, Maritime Union of India's MOU for Stranded Seafarers, Ministry of Tourism app for Hospitality Sector and then at the last we will be discussing about the India's GDP forecast given by ICRA. So these are the news items that we are going to cover in this video. So stay tuned till the end to understand what the important information are for your examination. Here comes our first question which asks us when is the International Day of Awareness on Food Loss and Waste Reduction Observed? So from the options itself you can understand that this day is definitely observed in the month of September and we are in October so why are we discussing this day which has already gone? The reason behind this is that this is the first edition of this day. So United Nations which is the observing organization has announced to observe the first edition of this day on 29th September. So what is our answer? It is 29th September. Now the objective of observing this day is very clear from its name itself that is to create awareness about food loss and food waste. Now why do we need to create awareness about food loss and food waste? The reason behind this is that 14% uh, 14 14 of food that we produce globally is lost between the post harvest till the final consumption state. So basically when the food is harvested till it is consumed almost 14% of the food is wasted and this is quite a big quantity that we are losing on food and this can be utilized by utilized for the least developed countries. So in order to reduce this food waste, this day is being observed. Now you must be thinking about the theme of this day because if we are covering any day, we have to first look out for the name of the day, then the date and then the theme. So these three things are very important for covering any important day. First is the day, name it the of the day, second is date and third is theme. So what is the theme of this day? 
the theme of the, this day is to stop food loss for the people for the planet so this in picture clearly states the theme the day and the day i hope that this picture helps you in remembering the theme because as i have already told you in previous videos pictures do help us a lot in remembering facts so that is why i have put this picture here so that's all that we need to cover about this day and then we are quickly moving on to our second question which asks us who heads the parliamentary committee on it it stands for information technology so the answer to this question is shashi thar if you are reading newspapers on a daily basis then it's well and good you have you must have come across shashi tharur's committee and the facebook spat that is going on uh, currently in parliament we are not going to delve into that conflict that is there between facebook and the parliament you just need to remember the name of the head of the committee now why have i put this here is the spat between facebook and parliament the only reason of this question being here no the reason the answer is no the reason behind putting this committee here is that recently parliament has reconstituted a total number of 24 committees and these 24 parliamentary committees have almost the same chairperson that they had before this reconstitution so shashi tharoor was earlier the chairperson of this committee and now he has been reappointed and similarly uh, for other committees the earlier or the latest chairperson has been re elected as the chairperson of that committee so now the thing that we need to discuss here is that uh, what are the important committees who are the heads of the important committees we are not going to delve into 24 committees because they are not very important from the examination point of view i have picked up only five most important committees that are very important from exam point of view so in this table i have put the five most important committees which are the committee on it that we have just discussed then we have a committee on finance who is headed by jayra jayant sinha then we have a committee on home affairs anand sharma science and technology environment forest and climate change we have jayram shukre sorry jayram ramesh and then we have a parliament committee on labor which is headed by bhartrari mehta so these are the five most important committees which are often in news that is why i have selected these five committees for your examination because they are continuously in news for some reason or the other so you do need to pay attention to them and memorize their heads that's all we need to discuss about this parliamentary committee question and here comes our third question of the day which is who has been appointed as the new president of the film and television institute of india society so as i have already told you in yesterday's video as well that you need to remember only three keywords in a sentence of appointment so can you recall what these three words are okay so let me do it again for you so those three words are first the first the person who has been appointed appointee then the designation and then the organization which is appointing that person so who is the appointee it is shekhar kapoor who is also a very renowned film maker obviously when we are talking about film and television society so the chair person is definitely going to be a person from film fraternity itself so so shekhar kapoor is the new president of this society that's all we need to discuss we need to keep in mind from the examination point of view for about this new appointment now guys i have a homework for you you have to tell me that where is this society located where is the headquarters of this society so this is your homework that you have to do and mention it in the comment section below then comes our next question who has been ranked the top in the iifl wealth harun india rich list 2020 now guys from this word 
you can yourself understand or guess the answer of this question so i hope that majority of you have already uh, guessed the answer so the answer to this question is obviously mukesh ambani who is the richest person of india and currently he is the fifth or sixth richest person of this world now guys besides this you also need to know that there are various organizations like bloomberg then we have fortune and we have uh, times forbes so these are the organizations which releases different kind of uh, rich list different kind of billionaires list so the all these li list are covered in spotlight magazine you can cover them from there but you need to pay attention to this list as well this list mentions that mukesh ambani is the most richest person and in this picture i have put the 10 most richest person of india uh, so that for your convenience you don't need to remember the names of these people you just need to keep the keep uh, mukesh ambani in mind that he has topped this list he is the most richest person of india now comes our next question which is about an mou so with which bank bombay stock exchange signed an mou to empower the small and medium enterprises listed on its platform so i have highlighted the keywords here what are the keywords bsc bombay stock exchange mou and the purpose to empower the small and medium enterprises now which bank is this what is our answer it is yes bank now in which way are they going to empower smes they are going to empower smes by spreading knowledge by spreading knowledge about financial uh, solutions about financial technology that is available and that uh, that the smes have not accessed yet so this is the purpose of this mou and that is all we need to keep in mind from the examination point of view which examination am i talking about phase 1 examination of majority of bank so you have to remember only these words now comes our next question which is about which bank has launched india's first warehouse commodity finance app first we will be discussing about the purpose of this app and then we will be moving on towards the answer of this question so what is the purpose the name itself is suggesting warehouse commodity finance app app is what is the purpose of an app to conduct the offline uh, offline operations online so through this app the customers of the bank will be able to manage their loans online so that is the purpose now what kind of loans are we talking about loans which have been taken by pledging the stock by pledging the warehouse commodity so i hope that i have simplified this question for you that uh, the, that the customers of the bank will be able to manage their operations online for the loans which loans loans which have been taken by uh, by pledging the commodity by pledging the warehouse commodity or stocks now let's discuss the answer of this question so what is the answer that can, can you guess the answer is hdfc bank so do remember this thing because it is india's first warehouse commodity app now i have a question for you guys you have to tell me that who is the md and ceo of hdfc bank and let's discuss the next question of the day that is about with which country has india recently established the green strategic partnership so let's discuss the answer first and then we will be discussing about the purpose of this uh, strategic partnership so the answer is denmark with denmark india has set up this green strategic partnership now from the word green itself uh, from the word green it is very evident that it is for climate purpose and cl clean energy purpose so under this partnership india and denmark will collaborate to uh, for the climate change for in order to promote green energy in order to reduce climate change impact so that is the whole purpose of this strategic green partnership that has been signed or that has been set up between india and 
Denmark. Quite easy, I hope. There is nothing uh, much to it, and there is nothing complex uh, things that we need to remember about this partnership because the name is very conspicuous. The name is very easy, which is suggesting the purpose as well. So do remember these things. And now comes our next question, which is about the multilateral uh, about the maritime union of India. So recently, with which multilateral agency has Maritime Union of India partnered to help Indians who are stranded on the ship due to COVID-19? We have already, uh, we have already know. Sorry, we already know what is the purpose of this partnership. That is to help the Indians who are stranded on the ship. And why are they stranded? Because of COVID-19. So there are very various, various uh, seafarers like. Navy soldiers. So they are stranded on ships and in order to help them this organization that is Maritime Union of India has partnered with what is the answer? Can you guess? The answer is United Nations. So with United Nations this has partnered in order to help Indians who are stranded on ship. Quite easy to remember. Now the next thing that we need to keep in mind is that International Maritime Organization is the specialized agency of United Nations nations that deal with the maritime operations. So this IMO has formed a specialized unit in order to help Indians, in order to execute this partnership. So I, ho I hope that I am clear till now. And if you have any kind of doubt, feel free to ask me in the comment section. So guys, here comes our next question, which is, what is the name of the app launched by Ministry of Tourism and Quality Council of India for the hospitality sector? So what are the keywords in this question? First is the app, Ministry of Tourism and Council, uh, Quality Council of India and the hospitality sector for which this app has been launched. So what is the name of the app? Can you guess? Even if you don't know the answer, do make a guess in the comment section below or write the answer in the piece of a paper because it will help you guys remember the right answer better. Remember that it always helps, this method always helps because in schools as well, we used to remember the right answers for the questions that we have uh, given the answers wrong with the class. So do not shy away, do mention your answers in the comment section or if you don't want to mention them in the comment section, then do write them on a piece of paper so that you know at the end of this lecture that how many questions you have done correct and how many questions you have attempted wrong. So what is the answer to this question? Let's discuss the name of that act which is Sati. Now you will understand the motto behind launching this app or the purpose of this app when you elaborate the name. So quickly let's elaborate the name Sati or let's bifurcate each and every word of this Sati because it is a mnemonic of a larger definition or basically or a larger uh, name. So what is the name? The name is System for assessment, assessment of what? Assessment of hotels that whether they are keeping uh, the quality standards high or whether they are uh, following the measures for uh, following the measures for curbing COVID nineteen spread. So assessment of those measures, assessment for COVID nineteen. Then awareness, awareness for staff and consumers what kind of awareness does this app aim to spread this app aims to spread the awareness that the hotels right now are keeping up are maintaining the uh, covid 19 safety measures and therefore the hotels are safe and you can visit the hotels. Now, what is the purpose behind encouraging people to visit the hotels? The purpose is to encourage tourism. Obviously, it is very obvious. So we have system for assessment, awareness and training. Now, what kind of training? Training for 
keeping up with the training for adapting the COVID-19 safety measures. So who will adapt to these measures? Hotels. So if you remember this uh, full form of Sathi, then I hope, then I sh can surely say that you will always remember the purpose of Sathi. So here, this question ends. There is nothing much to remember about this question, but I have a question for you guys. You have to tell me that who is the Union Minister of Tourism uh, in the comment section below. And here comes our last question of the day, which is about the GDP projection given by ICRA. So as I have told you that you have to remember only, only the latest GDP projections. So what is the latest projection? It is minus 11%. And guys, you don't need to mug up all the different kinds of GDP projections given by different uh, organizations. Just remember the latest one because they are regularly changing these GDP projections uh, and uh, they are almost downgrading the GDP projections for India for the year 2020 to 2020. One, the reason is obviously clear, the extended lockdown, the slowing economy and the COVID impact. So here this question ends and with this our session for the day also ends. I hope that you have liked this session and if you have really liked it then do like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. Visit the channel again and we will come tomorrow as well with the same morning tale series for tomorrow. Thank you so much.